Hi guys, Virtus Education here with a whole new series, and this new series is going to be uh, covering CryEngine 3, which is another game engine which we have available to us. Now, keep in mind there's a plethora of game engines that we have available to us, and CryEngine is definitely a strong contender, and I feel it's one of those that you should know uh, for game development. Now, having said that, we're going to be getting into this engine and playing around with the ins and outs and teaching you the basics of the engine, and then later going over some of the more advanced features and as per normal this is a beginner tutorial series and having said that pretty much anyone will be able to follow along on this series so let's quickly go over a um an overview of what the engine is before we go into some of the topics and actually start teaching you guys how to use the engine so CryEngine 3 is a standalone development kit SDK which allows developers to create their own games using its robust toolset plethora of features and next generation technology Having said that, developers can harness the power of the engine and create visually stunning and interactive games. Now, I mentioned that it is actually a next generation technology. This has a whole bunch of advanced functionality and we're definitely going to be utilizing that. So, in this, engine, in this series I'll be going over how you can best utilize the engine for game development and show you how to use it from the very beginning. In addition, we'll be taking advantage of some of the engine's many advanced features to create something spectacular over the duration of the project and series. Uh, so whether it is advanced AI, terrain skipped, uh, sculpting, or anything else, this engine will add some extra life whilst following along its learning curve. So we're going to get our hands on and we're going to be using some of the advanced and fun features of the engine. So, the editor is really powerful and I really can't wait to show you guys the engine and start teaching you it. So, let's just quickly go over some of the different topics that we're going to be going over the series. So, we're going to be going over a wide variety of topics within the series, just so I can teach you the ins and outs of utilizing its many features. Now, I have listed most of the uh, topics which I'm going to be going over the series, however, this isn't everything. This is just a small sample of what is to come, which I find amazing. Now, hopefully there will be about 30 or so videos, and hopefully this will take you from the base, uh, from the very basic steps of the engine to creating, uh, to getting you everything you need to create your entire level in there. So, let's just quickly give a overview of pretty much all the different topics. Now, I'm going to try and make this relatively quick uh, so we can actually get straight into the series and we can actually start making something using the Cry Engine because I'm really looking forward to it. So, we're going to start off with a series introduction, which is essentially what I'm doing now. I'm introducing you to the series and just giving you a good idea of what is to come. Next, I'm going to show you how to download and install the uh, SDK because CryEngine isn't necessarily the easiest engine to install. You have to download it, unzip it, then you got to open up, it, open it from a specific uh, a specific file within its binaries folder, and so on and so forth because you don't necessarily install it per se. And you also have to make an account just to open the engine. So, next after that I'm going to be introducing you to the interface which is essentially going to be me getting you familiar with the interface ready for the upcoming tutorials. Now, next I'm going to be going over the viewports you have inside of CryEngine and some basic navigation. Having said that, we're going to show you how to work with the different viewports, how to click and move things around in there, and then we're going to be going over navigating within your level, so you'll get to fly around and use some of the transformation tools. So. Next, we're going to be introducing you to the terrain editor inside of CryEngine. Having said that, this will allow you to uh, sculpt your very basic terrain, go over some of the more basic um, tools inside of the terrain editor, and hopefully get a basic terrain. Now, this is going to be somewhat similar to the UDK terrain sculpting. However, this actually has a whole ton of extra advanced features and just allows you to make really sexy um, terrains. And having said that, in the next video, I'm going to be going over detailing your terrain to get the most advanced, uh, to take advantage of some of the more advanced features and detail it. As in the previous video to this one, which I'm outlining now, is only going to be covering the basic ins and outs of the terrain editor. Next, I'm going to be going over how you can add materials to your terrain. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, create, some, use some of the preset materials that come with the engine to quickly paint them onto your terrain and, uh, and add essentially and essentially allow you to add grass, sand, rock, whatever you want to add so you can have your grass or you can have your mountains and so on and so forth. 
Now, next I'm going to be showing you how to install the CryTiff plugin for Photoshop. As um, CryEngine doesn't allow you to just quickly import PNGs and so on, you're going to need some kind of uh, plugin in Photoshop to export textures into the CryTiff format. So we're going to be showing you how to install the CryTiff um, plugin which is provided by the people that make, Cry, uh, that make CryEngine and then we can export our text just using it. Next we're going, to be going, we're going to be going over how to create custom terrain materials using the textures that we created uh, using the Creative plugin inside of Photoshop. Next we're going to be showing you how to move parts of your terrain. So at this point you should have a solid terrain for your level, however you may need to go ahead and move certain parts and rather than completely re-sculpting it you can essentially just drag and drop, uh, sorry, drag and move certain parts of your uh, terrain using uh, sources and then targets. Next we're going to be going over a few volumes. Now similar to other game engines you can actually have volumes and areas which actually hold something. Having said that we're going to be going over fo uh, fog volumes which will be allowing us to uh, place fog in a certain place and the same with water and we're going to be going over some of the materials and parameters that accompany it. I'm also going to be going over environment settings. These environment settings will be things like rain, global lighting, uh, fog and so on and so forth but I'll be detailing that more when we get there. Next, we're going to be using some of the pathing systems which we have inside a CryEngine. These path systems actually allow us to create rivers or paths, so we can actually uh, essentially just drag different points and uh, make paths, and then if we want to, we can put uh, different types of materials and play around the parameters to create either roads or rivers, and I'll be going over that uh, very shortly. Next, we're going to be going over working with solids. Now, CryEngine has a system similar to UDK where you can actually create basic geometry, familiar, pretty much similar to uh, BSP and UDK. So you can actually ba make your basic geometry for all your assets and so on to go around or just portray the base shape of your level. And we're going to be going over how to make that and uh, what we can do with it. But just look forward to it, it's going to be pretty fun. Next, we're going to be going over how you can place your brushes. These brushes are essentially going to be your static meshes. So you'll be, be so we'll be uh, showing you how to bring in your props and so on to make up your level. Next, we're going to be introducing you to lighting. Now, CryEngine is brilliant in terms of its lighting. You have many different types of light lights that we can play around with, tons of effects and so on. And next we're going to be showing you some of the more uh, advanced lighting effects. These are going to be the HDR stuff, so we'll be showing you how to play around with your bloom, your lens flares, and all the different parameters which we, which we actually have available. Next we're going to be going over time of day. Now CryEngine has a brilliant dynamic system for uh, playing around the time of the day. So you can uh, actually have different times using the uh, skybox and so on. So you can have your global illumination low at the beginning of the day and then high as it gets to noon and so on. And we can actually make this uh, change based on the playtime and so on and so forth. But we'll get more into this later. It's really brilliant and I really can't wait to play around with it. Next we'll be going over how you can add some vegetation into your scene. Now similar to foliage mode inside of UDK, you'll be using this to create your vegetation. So you'll be uh, placing down loads and loads of grass and trees and so on r relatively quickly as opposed to just uh, dragging in singular um, brushes into the scene. Now this is essentially going to make things a hell of a lot faster and uh, yeah we're going to get to play around with it. Next I'm going to be going over sound effects inside of uh, CryEngine. Having said that we'll be able to add the extra level of atmosphere derived from sounds and I'll be going over different sound types, uh, the parameters and so on and so forth. Next I'm going to be going over custom asset production inside of CryEngine. Having said that we'll be using uh, 3ds Max in conjunction with the engine to bring in our own meshes which we've actually created because um, CryEngine doesn't necessarily allow us to uh, bring in our own custom stuff very easily but uh, we will be going over that and I'll be showing you how to do it with 3ds Max and you'll be able to follow along with pretty much any other uh, 3D modeling package that you might have available to you whether it's Blender, Maya or whatever it's going to be relatively easy for us once you follow along. Next I'm going to be going over creating some advanced materials. These advanced materials are going to be used on the props that we create 
ourselves. Now, I will have shown you how to create some basic materials at this point for the terrain, however, this is most likely just going to be your diffuse and specular, whereas the advanced materials are going to have your diffuse, your specular, your emissive, your AO, um, and normal maps, and etc, etc, and whatever else you might need. Now, just keep in mind, this is going to be really fun and will allow you to uh, make your scenes a little more unique from those scenes that you've seen already, which essentially only use your preset stuff. Now, these advanced materials are going to be using our own textures and are going to be applied to our own meshes. So, next we're going to be going over entities inside of CryEngine. CryEngine actually provides us with tons and tons of different entities that we can play around with and drag into the scene. These entities range from vehicles, frogs, AI, or even things like um, cyclones and so on and so forth. So we're going to be looking over some of the different entities we have and then I'm going to get you guys to experiment with some of these. Next I'm going to be going over placing some rudimentary AI. Having said that we're going to be able to um, drag some enemies into the scene and then we're going to play around with some of the basic properties that we have it and hopefully if we have time we'll get to play around with like patrol paths and so on and so forth. Next, I'm going to be do uh, I'm going to be introducing you to the flow graph system inside a CryEngine. Now, the flow graph system is very similar to UDK's uh, Kismet system, where you essentially uh, do your programming visually uh, in the form of connecting up your different nodes. And I'm going to be introducing you to this, and just in the next video, I'm going to be creating some basic spawn points using the flow graph system, so you can get a good hand of it. Now, I am actually going to be asking you to look into this yourself as there is tons and tons of stuff and I can't necessarily teach you it all but I'm going to give you a good understanding of different types of nodes and so on and so forth that you're going to have inside of that and that is essentially pretty much all my different topics which I have ready for you guys now keep in mind this is just a sample of some of the stuff to cut uh, which I have in mind for you now this is probably going to be about 30 videos or I might even bump it up to 40 if I get some additional topics but I know one thing I do know for certain is that this is not all the topics which I'm going to be going over. I'm going to go over more and more stuff. So having said that, comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the next video in which we'll be going over downloading and installing the SDK, ready to experiment with the engine. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.